Hey, what's going on everyone? So last night, Ford unveiled their first attempt at an all-electric pickup, which they named the F-150 Lightning, which is a callback to one of Ford's trucks from the 90s. We're gonna get into the specs and how they compare to the likes of the Cybertruck and Rivian, but first, we need to acknowledge the elephant in the room. Ford sells trucks, lots and lots of trucks. The Ford F-Series has been the best-selling vehicle in America for 39 years, and they sold close to a million of them last year in the US alone. What that means is, when it comes to manufacturing and selling trucks, Ford has proven that they know what they're doing. The trick for them is going to be, while they've proven they can make a truck, they still have to prove just how effective of an electric drivetrain they can create. So with that out of the way, let's get into exactly what Ford's cooked up to enter the incredibly hot, but still pretty much non-existent electric truck market. But before we do, I wanna let you in on a great way to help out the channel and get yourself up to two free stocks. Webull, the stock trading app, is currently offering two free stocks for opening an account and making a $100 deposit if you're in the US. If you're interested, click the link in the description for more information. All right, let's start with the looks. If you've seen a regular gas F-150, well then you've basically seen the electric version. Ford's gone with the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach, and honestly, I'm totally fine with it. The few differences between the electrified version and the gas version are that on the Lightning, we have the light strip that runs across the headlights. Same thing on the tail end. This appears to be an optional feature though, as they call it signature front lighting in their marketing material. So there may be an option that doesn't have the light strip and then it really would just look like a regular F-150. And then one of the only other visual differences is the grill intakes have been blocked out because you don't need extra airflow for EVs. There are some other small changes, but that's basically it. And I realize I may be in the minority with this, but I kind of like that they just left their design alone. The Lightning just looks like a truck. You probably wouldn't even know it's electric. And I think especially for Ford's target audience, that's a good thing. I like radical designs as much as anybody does, and I happen to really like the Cybertruck, partially for the insane design. But I also think the idea of just letting EVs blend in with everything else. They don't have to be statement pieces, they can just be. Also, from a purely practical perspective, I'm sure Ford is able to use a bunch of the parts from their gas versions, which is gonna save them a bunch on cost, so that's a win in my book. When it comes to the spec sheet, as I was watching the announcement last night, I found myself thinking, that is incredibly average to just about every single spec they named. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It has a targeted range of either 230 or 300 miles, depending on if you get the regular or extended battery version. Not great, but not terrible either. Pretty average. I will say with something like a truck where they're expecting customers to be towing and using the onboard batteries to power tools on the work site, I'd love to see more range or at least an option for more range. Because I think with a truck, that range might be fine, but you have the option to use the battery for so many things other than range and that makes me want an extra massive battery. More than what I would want in just a regular sedan. And Ford knows people want to use the truck for the battery because they built in an intelligent backup power system so that when your truck is plugged into your house, you can configure it so that when the power to your house goes out, your truck automatically begins pumping up to 9.6 kilowatts of electricity into your house to keep things working. And the truck can sustain that peak load for up to three days. This is a killer feature, and I am so glad that Ford is capitalizing on the fact that massive batteries are useful. This concept is one that, although I know Tesla is capable of and they're planning on offering it in the future, they currently aren't offering it to customers, and I really wish they would. When we have natural disasters like what happened in Texas where large areas of the grid were without power for weeks at a time, being able to have your EV power your house would be immensely useful. So big ups to Ford for including this feature. Moving on to the size of the batteries themselves, Ford didn't tell us, but if we do some quick napkin math for the charging times, we can approximate that the regular battery is around 138 kilowatt hours and the long range version is around 175 kilowatt hours. Those are some giant batteries, and I'll be honest, it's a bit disappointed that they're only able to get up to 300 miles of range with a battery that size. For some quick reference, the Cybertruck is expected to have a max battery size of 200 kilowatt hours and a max range of 500 miles, which means we're talking about 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. 
on the Lightning, we're at about 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is over 30% less range per kilowatt. Now, to be totally fair, this is all theoretical. Both companies have an estimated EPA range on their sites, but we're gonna know more about the range once they start shipping to customers, which for Ford is in the spring of 2022, and for the Cybertruck is at the end of 2021. I will say, based off the Ford Mach-E range estimates given by the EPA and how they stack up to real world use, they seem to be pretty spot on. So that makes me think they're probably pretty close with the Lightning too, but again, we'll know more once they start shipping. As far as towing capacity, the Lightning has a max of 10,000 pounds, which is a solid amount, but it's quite a ways off the Cybertruck's max of over 14,000. And then the same thing with the payload capacity, which is 2,000 pounds on the Ford versus a pretty staggering 3,500 on the Tesla. Are you seeing what I mean with the spec sheets? It's not that any of them are bad necessarily, they're just kind of average. But now I wanna get into the features that I'm actually really excited about. The first one was the ability to send power to your house, which is awesome, but they didn't stop there. The frunk in this thing is the best frunk I've seen in an EV yet. I mean, just look at this thing. Not only is it huge, Ford says you can put eight bags of concrete, which why not measure everything in bags of concrete, but also the hood opens in such a way that really gives you easy access and it's got plugins so you can power things from the frunk itself. The first thought that came in my head when I saw this is that you could throw an electric skateboard in there and then while you're driving, it's charging your skateboard and then you get to use it as your last mile of transportation, but it's always going to be charged. Not only that, but you can open, close, lock, and unlock the frunk from your phone, which is kind of neat. This might be the first frunk that I've thought really adds utility to the car, not just extra storage space. Extra storage is nice and all, but this is on the next level, especially on a truck where you can't always leave stuff in the bed or it might get jacked. Though the Cybertruck does have an advantage there with its lockable vault. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that I think Ford knocked it out of the park with their frunk design and other manufacturers should take notes on this one. The only thing they got wrong was the name, the Mega Power Frunk. I mean, actually, you know what? I'm gonna call it that. They've earned it. I'll call it whatever they want. Another great feature is that they built a scale into the truck bed, so whenever you throw something in, you know exactly how much it weighs. Necessary? Not at all. Pretty neat? Yeah. Same thing with the lighting. Ford added a bunch of lights basically everywhere so that when you're around the truck at night, you can still see what you're doing. Cool stuff. And there's a bunch more great stuff about this truck, but I wanna talk about one of the most important aspects, the price. The cheapest model starts at 40 grand and you can spec it all the way up to 90 grand. And hats off to Ford on that pricing, honestly. And that's before the $7,500 federal tax credit and any state tax credit that you might get. 40 grand is really cheap, especially when you compare it against the competition such as the Rivian, which starts at 75 grand, or the Hummer EV, which starts at 80 grand. The Cybertruck also starts at 40 grand, so it's going to be awesome when both of these trucks are out, and at least in price, we can compare apples to apples. You love to see it. And also, big ups to Ford for doing what few are doing and coming out with a competitively priced vehicle right out of the gates. I'm a little bit nervous for them because there's a reason basically every other manufacturer is coming out with their expensive and high spec models first. It's so they can get their production lines and manufacturing processes up and running with relatively low volume and still have good margins. Ford isn't exactly the new kid on the block when it comes to making trucks, but they are new to making electric vehicles, so I'm sure they're going to run into a few challenges with mass producing these electric trucks. All right, we're gonna leave it there. I'm curious to see what you think of Ford's new F-150 Lightning. I'm personally really excited for it. And other than a somewhat disappointing range, I really think Ford has a winner on their hands as long as it performs as they're saying it will. The more competition in the EV space, the better. And I think this truck has a whole lot going for it. Huge thank you to my Patreon members for making this channel possible. If you want to join them and join our private Discord server, check out the link below. That's going to do it for this video. See you all in the next one. Cheers.